Order members, Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment uh, wishes to make a statement to the House this afternoon. Uh, Minister. Much, Mr. Speaker, and with your permission, I wish to inform members of my intention to launch a public consultation on the future delivery of consumer representation in Northern Ireland following a review of the General Consumer Council for Northern Ireland. The Executive in its 2011-15 budget committed to undertake a review of arm's length bodies to ensure ministerial priorities and statutory commitments continue to be delivered in the most cost-effective manner. The review of the Consumer Council and this consultation on the future, future delivery of consumer representation in Northern Ireland is a continuation of this process of ensuring value for money in the use of public funds and the delivery of services to the Northern Ireland public. In October 2012, Detty commissioned an independent review of the efficiency and effectiveness of the Consumer Council for Northern Ireland. The purpose of this review was to ensure that the Council's consumer advocacy role in Northern Ireland is delivered by the most appropriate body or bodies, structured and positioned correctly within government or otherwise, operating efficiently and effectively, and fit for purpose in moving forward with the executor's consumer and wider economic aims. The review took account of the changing consumer landscape in Great Britain and the view of a wide range of stakeholders. I am now in receipt of the report setting out the review's conclusions and its recommendations for the exercise of the consumer representation function in Northern Ireland. The report recognises that the Council has been responsive to consumers and has been effective as an organisation. However, it concludes that the political and consumer landscape has changed significantly since the General Consumer Council was created in 1985. The Council was last reviewed in 1999. It is important that we periodically review public sector organisations to ensure that they continue to fulfil a need and that we take account of changed circumstances. We now have locally accountable government in Northern Ireland post-evolution, the existence of numerous local and regional advice bodies, a utility regulator to protect consumer interests in the energy and water sectors, an effective trading standard service for Northern Ireland, and much greater retail competition on the high street. In that context, the report concludes that the continued existence of the Consumer Council may no longer be essential to consumers, nor be the most cost-effective mechanism for consumer representation in Northern Ireland. However, the report recognises that the Council provides certain functions in relation to the regulated industries that are currently exer not exercised by any other body, but must continue to be exercised. I have considered the report findings and now wish to consult on the most appropriate model for the delivery of consumer representation in Northern Ireland, recognising the very different political and consumer context we now enjoy. I am seeking views specifically on the following options. The continuation of the current consumer model of an arm's length body to represent the consumer. The establishment of an independent consumer representative body outside government or the abolition of the Council and transfer of consumer representation role, including the regulated industries role, to an existing non-government advice body or bodies. Consultees may, of course, also identify other potential options for consideration by my department. Members can access a copy of the consultation document and the review report on the DETI website, and a copy has been made available in the Assembly Library. I commend this statement to the Assembly. Call Mr. Patsy McGlone, Chairperson of the Committee for Enterprise, Trade and Investment. Mr. McGlone. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I guess and I thank the Minister as well. Um, to put on record, the Committee, and indeed it's, it's included in the Simpson Report, um, the Committee for Enterprise, Trade and Investment provided a written response to the review on the 31st of May. In its response, the committee said it was content that the Consumer Council provides an effective and efficient service and that to date no concerns had been raised regarding the Council's remittance structure. Essentially, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And indeed, in relation to the change circumstances that the Minister did refer to, there is one major change circumstance that's affecting virtually all of our constituents, and that's a recession. And I had to pay tribute to the role of the Consumer Council in regard to its work on many consumer-related issues, ranging from banking, fuel, right across to the most basic, that's food. Um, but can I ask the Minister if she will give us assurances that the report uh, by Mr Simpson, indeed commissioned by her department, 
which recommends the virtual role of the Consumer Council being handed over to CAB. Um, will the Minister uh, provide me with an assurance as to how much she will give credence to that report and how much weight her department will give in relation to the consultation exercise? In other words, that basically we aren't going through a charade of consultation and that really the main driving agenda is in fact the Simpson report. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to the Chair for his comments. And indeed, they did uh, engage in writing with the uh, Simpson Review, and I'm sure that was taken into account uh, in relation to his work. Um, as the Chair will know, and we've had the opportunity to briefly discuss this matter this morning, um, all of the um, arm's length bodies are subject to periodic uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, reviews. As I said, the last one on the Consumer Council was carried out in 1999, so I did feel that there was a need uh, to have this review take place, and of course it will form part of my consideration, only part of my consideration, in relation to where we go next, because I am putting this out to as wide as possible a consultation as possible. Uh, I look forward to hearing from consumer groups. I look forward to hearing from all of the different stakeholders right across Northern Ireland as to not just how they interact with the Consumer Council, uh, but also in relation to effectiveness, efficiency, taking into account the changed political landscape, taking into account the changes which have occurred in the rest of the United Kingdom. Um, so all of those issues will have to be considered when I look at the final issues, which I hope will be in and around of January next year. Call Mr Gordon Dunn. Mr Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement today. How does the Minister see the consultative role of, of the Consumer Council on issues like energy costs and water regulation being managed in the future? Well, again, that was one of the issues pointed out um, by uh, Mr Simpson, because what he essentially said was that although there are now quite a few bodies dealing with uh, potentially consumer issues, um, and uh, the Chair has already mentioned the Citizens Advice Bureau, but there are other uh, uh, bodies as well. The statutory role of the Consumer Council will, of course, have to continue in some manner or another, and I would be very interested to hear uh, from uh, those people who use the Consumer Council, particularly in relation to the statutory role in terms of water or in energy, to come forward and with ideas as to whether they're happy with the way in which it's done at present. Uh, if they're not, what other ways can we look at uh, performing that statutory role? Because no matter what model uh, is picked after the consultation, we still have to have that regulatory role uh, fulfilled, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, and therefore that's something that will continue regardless of what model we go for. Call Mr Phil Flanagan. I will ask you, and I thank the, the Minister both for her statement and for providing the, the Chair and myself with an advanced copy of the report and for briefing us this morning on her statement. Um, I, I agree with some of the findings of the, the consultant's report, particularly with regards to the, the lack of technical expertise within the Consumer Council. But would the Minister agree that there is a role for a government-funded body to, to challenge and scrutinise the Executive and the Assembly's policies on, on regulated affairs, such as energy policy and, indeed, fuel poverty? And indeed, the Consumer Council has often challenged not just my own department, but also DRD in relation to those regulatory functions. And that's why I say that that still will continue, regardless of what model we choose after uh, the consultation has been finished, because that must continue. Uh, we must have uh, the, uh, a body to bring forward uh, complaints, particularly in relation to regulated industries, uh, because that is a legislative uh, commitment. So therefore, there has to be uh, a continuance of that. Whether the, the big question uh, for me, um, and indeed for this consultation, is whether the General Consumer Council is the right body to take that forward into the future, given the changed landscape uh, and given all of the other issues that have arisen uh, in the Simpson report. Call Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I also thank the Minister for her statement this, morning, this afternoon. Uh, the Minister refers to certain functions uh, being carried out by the Consumer Council which would need to be continued. In the Minister's view, how, how, how would this happen? Could you identify those particular uh, functions? Well, those are the functions that we've been talking about, particularly in relation to um, Northern Ireland Water. 
There still needs to be regulatory functions in terms of that. There still needs to be uh, a regulatory function in terms of all of the energy matters, uh, which the Consumer Council have to date been dealing with. Uh, those will have to continue, regardless of whether the Consumer Council uh, is here or not. And uh, I think it was the Chair that made reference to the fact that uh, Mr Simpson um, seen that the Citizens Advice Bureau may be able to deal with those issues. Uh, obviously, I can't uh, be as uh, dogmatic as that, because obviously there would be procurement issues involved in any body that was to come forward uh, to provide those uh, services. So, that's what the consultation is about. It's about really identifying alternative models or whether the model that we have is doing the job well enough to continue uh, with that job. I have been very clear. I am not recommending uh, one option or the other. I am simply asking for views from the wider public in relation to not just uh, Mr Simpson's report, but all of the other issues that have been identified in the consultation. I'll call Mr Trevor Lund. Yes, thank you. Mr Deputy Speaker, I, I haven't had the benefit of seeing this review report yet because as of an hour ago it wasn't available on the Delhi website or in the library. But uh, based on the Minister's statement, um, I, I can see the general direction of travel. Is, is the Minister aware of the, that the Scottish Parliament has done a similar review, possibly a more wide-ranging review than, than, than this one? and that their conclusion appears to be that a model very similar to the Consumer Council for Northern Ireland might be the way for Scotland to go. I am aware of the work that has been undertaken by the Scottish Parliament. That consultation, I think, happened during the summer, which was possibly concurrent or rather to the end of Mr Simpson's piece of work. Um, but it also is in the context of an independent Scotland. So, as you can imagine, it is very heavily weighted in a particular way. Uh, and it also goes much wider than the work of the current Consumer Council. It looks at the work that currently is carried on by other advice agencies in Northern Ireland at present. So whilst I am aware of the work, and uh, I'm sure that some consultees will want to again draw it to my attention, we should be aware of the context in which that Scottish work was carried out. Call Mr Paul Free. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement uh, this afternoon. Can I ask the Minister, given the review took account of the changing consumer uh, landscape in the rest of the UK, will there be opportunity for her department to scrutinise and investigate best practice models throughout Europe and indeed the world? Well, in the terms of reference, um, we very much wanted Mr Simpson to look at the current operating context and uh, because of the changing political uh, atmosphere here in the devolved region of Northern Ireland, we wanted him also to look at the other UK government uh, agencies, devolved administrations and indeed what was happening generally. Um, and uh, there is a requirement for us to take into account uh, that framework, if you like, when we're looking at our consumer protection uh, and uh, consumer advocacy, and that's what Mr Simpson has done in relation to his report. As I said, there have been other developments, particularly in relation uh, to the Scottish Parliament piece of work, which no doubt will come up in the consultation responses, and we will have those considered as well. Call Mr Sidney Anderson. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her statement today. Uh, can the Minister tell us the, the difference between, uh, that she sees between uh, options one and options two in her statement? Well, option one, um, if I can go back to my statement, I need to make sure I'm saying the right thing. Um, the option one is the continuation of the current Consumer Council, which is really an arm's length body of my department and therefore is accountable to my department, gets its funding uh, from my department. Uh, and option two is really the establishment of an independent consumer representative body, which would be completely outside of government, may get government funding, may also actually be able to access other funding outside of government, which of course would be uh, an advantage for that organisation and it of course would be completely independent from government uh, and therefore uh, not open to the allegation that they're influenced by the fact that they are an arm's length body uh, of uh, a government department. Call Mr Fergal McKinney. 
Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I note the statement from the Minister refers to uh, how the Consumer Council has been responsive and effective, and my colleague uh, and also Chair of the Committee uh, also referred to how it was viewed to be an efficient organisation. I'm sure that passes uh, some tests, and I also understand that uh, the organisation has helped put £300,000 directly back into consumer pockets in the last year. But can I ask the Minister, isn't this really about uh, silencing the Consumer Council and, by extension, consumer voice? And shouldn't we, uh, in these times, have a greater consumer voice rather than a diminished one? Well, it's absolutely not about that. I've explained the context uh, for this review. This organisation hasn't been reviewed since 1999. And it's incumbent upon government ministers to review their arm's length body, not just because of the fact that it was pointed out in the 2011 to 15 budget that that's something every government minister should do, but also for, the, for very good practical reasons, such as testing the efficiency, the effectiveness, the value for money, the changed political landscape. So I completely and absolutely uh, dispute that allegation that has been put. Call Mr. Tom Elliott. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister uh, for that. Uh, just to ask the Minister, are there any financial implications in the remit of the consultation? Uh, well, the consultation, uh, the work carried out by Mr Simpson, I think costs in the region of £20,000, um, and obviously there will be costs associated with the consultation, because it may well be the case that we will go out and have uh, workshops uh, in connection with the consultation to engage uh, with the wider public. There will, of course, be uh, officials engaged in this work as well, so there will be financial implications. But as I have tried to do right throughout this review process, those will be kept to a minimum. Call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her statement th this morning? The Minister um, has said this morning that she is seeking views on a body outside of government for this new role. Could I ask the Minister, will that include or should that include a social enterprise model, and are there other social enterprise models of this character anywhere else in the world? Well, we're not being prescriptive as to uh, if we decide to replace the Consumer Council, what will come along in its place. And indeed, uh, it may well be the case that the social enterprise model may be one that we will want to look into. But again, I'm not being prescriptive in terms of this consultation. I think it's important that we are as open uh, as we possibly can be. Obviously, there's the Simpson report, which people will want to consider. There's the overall changing consumer landscape in the United Kingdom, which they will want to consider as well. Uh, but I think it would be wrong of me to say one way or the other, uh, which I think is the best model moving forward. Call Mr. Alban McGuinness. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for her statement. Um, I haven't read the report yet, but look forward to reading it. But um, the Minister's reaction to Mr. McKinney's uh, question uh, suggested to me that the Minister was uh, protesting too much. Uh, and I just wonder if, in fact, uh, the Minister is adopting. I know the Minister may find this hard to take, but is the Minister in fact adopting a neutral role in this? Uh, is she just waiting to hear for a genuine consultation, or is there a, a fixed view within the Department that the Consumer Council should go and CAB should take its functions? Uh, the reason I threw my arms to the air, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, is uh, it's very difficult to win in this circumstance. Uh, if I had have been lukewarm in response to Mr McKinney's question, I would have been uh, told that I, was, uh, uh, I had obviously an answer that I was keeping back. Because I was robust in saying that this was not politically motivated, I am told, therefore, that uh, I have been over-robust in relation to the answer. So let me just say to, uh, to the member, he knows that I'm a pretty straightforward kind of person. If I had have had a choice in relation to which I preferred, I would have said it in the consultation. I am being as open as I possibly can be in relation to this consultation, and I can say no more. Call Mr. Jim Allister. Thank you. Could I ask the Minister to give some indication of how she thinks a oversight of the utility regulator will evolve? It seems at present there are no reporting structures in terms of the regulator reporting to her department, uh, and therefore we have difficulties with, for example, who oversees or 
who can oversee the overseer in terms of whether or not NIE, Sony are keeping their license conditions. Where does she see this going in terms of oversight of the utility regulator? This is a question that the member has raised with me on a number of occasions. Just to be clear, the, the utility regulator receives his funding, and it is him at the minute, I think. Uh, they, they receive their funding from DFP, uh, but they are not uh, an arm's length body. They are entirely uh, independent and are only responsible, not to a government department, but to this assembly. This assembly is the only place uh, which holds the utility regulator to account because he's entirely independent. And I think that's right because he shouldn't be open uh, to influence by any government department or indeed any government minister because he's dealing uh, with uh, uh, issues which should be completely independent. Uh, if the member uh, wishes me to look at this matter along with the minister for DFP, I'm quite content to do so. Uh, but it is really a matter for him as it's him uh, that funds uh, the utility regulator and not myself. Order. That concludes questions on the statement.